This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices fell on Tuesday, extending losses from the previous session amid concerns about demand in China, the world's largest crude importer, while the market shrugged off the risk of conflict escalating in the Middle East. Brent crude oil futures fell by 40 cents, or 0.5 percent, to $79.38 a barrel by 0640 GNT. U.S. crude futures were down 43 cents, or 0.6 percent, at $75.38 a barrel. A raft of disappointing economic news out of China has shaken markets recently. China's manufacturing activity likely shrank for a third month in July, a Reuters poll showed on Monday. Freeport LNG was on track to return to full production on Sunday, pulling over 2 billion cubic feet BCF, of natural gas, LSEG data showed. Freeport is the United States' second-largest LNG exporter and one of the most watched U.S. LNG export plants in the world because it has a history of swaying global gas prices when it shuts and restarts. The U.S. is the world's largest exporter of the super-chilled gas. Freeport LNG shut down on July 7 in preparation for Hurricane Beryl and has been slowly increasing feed gas demand, according to LSEG data. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The power sector is the only major consumer of natural gas that has shown consistent demand growth in recent years, and has become the driving force behind natural gas demand in the United States as consumption from other sectors declines. Natural gas use by power generators has expanded by around 3.5% a year over the past three years, and is by far the largest single source of gas use in the US, data from LSEG shows. However, by volume, Growth in natural gas use by the power sector was outweighed by declines in others. Average gas consumption by power firms grew by 70 billion cubic feet per day in 2023, while average combined consumption by industry, households and commercial users fell by 114 billion cf per day. New Zealand said on Tuesday it would conduct a study to review the country's fuel security requirements amid concerns any potential disruptions to the international supply chain could affect domestic supplies. The Pacific nation, which imports all its liquid fuels, said the study will check demand forecast, engage with stakeholders across the supply chain and detect possible threats. We need to protect ourselves from potential crises at home and overseas and to put measures in place to mitigate and manage adverse impacts, Associate Energy Minister Shane Jones said in a statement. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Saudi Arabia's Manara Minerals is looking at opportunities to invest in lithium production in Chile, Mining Minister Bundar al Koreyev said on Monday during a visit to the South American country. Manara, a joint venture between state-owned miner Ma'adin and the Public Investment Fund, PIF, is analyzing the different options, al Koreyev said in an interview. Saudi Arabia is working to secure access to lithium and other minerals as part of its goal to turn itself into a hub for battery and EV manufacturing as it aims to diversify its oil-dependent economy. Long-term uranium contract prices have hit over 16-year highs on supply uncertainty and higher demand from utilities scrambling to secure the radioactive fuel to aggressively expand their capacity to power mushrooming AI data centers. Term prices are now around $79 per pound the highest since 2008, and estimated to rise further in coming months. With a stronger market environment, we're currently locking in ceilings of about $125 to $130 per pound and floors at about $70 to $75 per pound in market-related contracts, the best prices seen in over a decade, said uranium miner Cameco. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is expected to rate 66% of the nation's corn crop and 67% of U.S. soybean crops in good to excellent condition in its weekly crop progress report, a decline for both from the previous week, a Reuters poll of 13 analysts showed on Monday. The ratings represent a one percentage point dip from last week for corn and soy, with corn rated 67% good to excellent last week and soy rated 68%. 
the U.S. winter wheat harvest is expected to continue its rapid advance. Analysts, on average, expected the USDA to show the harvest as 83% complete, up from 76% last week. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.